James from NCC here. Welcome to the CompTIA Network Plus exam objectives overview. In this video, we'll walk through the structure of the N10-009 exam, its domains and the key concepts you'll need to master. By the end, you'll have a clear roadmap of what to expect and where to focus your studies. The Network Plus exam consists of a maximum of 90 questions, you'll face both multiple choice and performance based questions with a total exam time of 90 minutes. CompTIA recommends at least 9 to 12 months of IT networking experience before attempting the exam. The exam objectives are divided into 5 weighted domains and here's how the exam is broken down. Domain 1, networking concepts is 23%, Domain 2, network implementation is 20%, Domain 3, network operations 19%, Domain 4, network security is only 14% and last Domain 5, network troubleshooting 24%. Now you'll notice that troubleshooting carries the highest weight so you need strong hands-on problem solving skills. Now the OSI reference model is a foundation of networking. You must understand the seven layers, physical, data link, network, transport, session, presentation and application. Each layer has its role in exam questions often ask you to identify which layer a specific technology or troubleshooting step belongs to. Network appliances are critical for building and securing networks. You need to know how routers, switches, firewalls, IDS and IPS systems, load balancers, proxies, NAS and SAN storage devices, wireless components and network functions all fit into modern infrastructure. Cloud computing is a growing part of IT. Expect to see questions on network function virtualization, virtual private clouds, cloud gateways, connectivity options, deployment models, service models, scalability and multi-tenancy. Understanding these concepts will help you connect traditional networking with today's cloud-based environment. CompTIA expects you to know common ports and protocols. Just a few examples here, FTP uses 20 and 21, SSH and SFTP uses 22, DNS is 53, DHCP runs on port 67 and 68, HTTP is port 80, HTTPS is 443, RDP uses 3389. Memorizing the most common ports will help you in both multiple choice questions and troubleshooting scenarios. You need to understand IPv4 addressing. Now this includes public, private addressing, the different classes A through to E, subnetting concepts, CIDR notation, and how to implement VLSM. Subnetting and CIDR questions are common on the exam. IPv6 knowledge, also tested, you must understand address exhaustion mitigation, tunneling, dual stack, and NAT64. Now IPv6 is increasingly used, so you'll be expected to compare it to IPv4 and recognize migration technologies. Routing is a core skill. Be prepared to compare static dynamic routing protocols such as BGP, EI, GRP and OSPF. Know how route selection criteria works and how address translation technologies like NAT and PAD function. You also need to understand the redundancy protocols for high availability. Switching concepts are also covered. Focus on VLAN configuration, interface settings, 802.1Q tagging, link aggregation, spanning tree protocols, and MTU settings. These are common tasks for network administrators and regularly appear in exam questions. You also need to understand wireless technologies. This includes channel configuration, frequency options, SSID identifiers, network types, encryption standards, and authentication methods. Wireless setup and troubleshooting scenarios are highly likely on the exam. 
Physical installation is often overlooked, but very important. You should know about power considerations like UPS, PDUs, load and voltage. Location planning, including IDF, MDF rooms. Rack specifications and airflow. Cabling infrastructure, such as patch panels and fiber distribution. Physical security, like lockable racks. Now these factors are key in designing a reliable network. Finally, consider environmental factors. That means humidity control, fire suppression systems and temperature management. Proper planning prevents downtime and equipment failure. Network documentation is essential for operations. Be prepared to identify physical and logical diagrams, rack diagrams, cable maps, network diagrams at different layers, asset inventories, IP address management systems, service level agreements and wireless surveys. You will also be tested on life cycle management. Now this includes end of life and end of support planning. Software management like patches, operating systems and firmware and decommissioning procedures. Change management ensures the network stability, understand the request process, tracking changes and handling service requests. These practices help avoid downtime and maintain consistency. Monitoring is a critical operation skill. Expect questions on SNMP, flow data, packet capture, baseline metrics, log aggregation, API integration and monitoring solutions. These tools are used daily by network administrators. Security is an important domain. You need to understand logical security like encryption, certificates and PKI. Know about identity and access management methods such as authentication, MFA and SSO. Be familiar with authorization models like least privileged and role-based access. Physical security and deception technologies like honeypots are also tested. You'll be expected to identify common attacks. Now these include DOS and DDoS attacks, VLAN hopping, MAP flooding, ARP poisoning, DNS poisoning, rogue DHCP servers, rogue access points, evil twin attacks, social engineering and malware threats. Be prepared to match these attacks to their symptoms and countermeasures. Finally, security defense techniques. You should know about device hardening, network access control methods such as port security and 802.1x, key management, access control lists, URL filtering and security zones. These are practical measures to defend networks. Troubleshooting is the largest domain at 24%. You must know the seven step mythology. Identify the problem, establish a theory of probable cause, test the theory, establish a plan and implement a solution, uh, verify functionality and implement preventative measures and lastly document the findings. These steps help structure any troubleshooting scenario. You need to be comfortable with both software and hardware tools. Software tools include protocol analyzers, command line utilities like ping, traceroute, NSLOOKUP, TCP dump, DIG, NETSTAT, IPConfig and ARP as well as NMAP, LLDP or CDP and speed testers. Hardware tools include toner probes, cable testers, network traps and Wi-Fi analyzers and visual fault locators. Finally, be ready for common troubleshooting issues. Now these include cabling problems like incorrect cables or improper termination, interface issues such as counters or port status errors, switching issues including spanning tree loops and VLAN assignments, routing problems like table errors or missing default routes, IP addressing issues such as exhaustion or wrong gateways, performance problems like congestion, latency, packet loss, and wireless issues such as interference, 
signal degradation and roaming difficulties. And that concludes our overview of the CompTIA Network Plus exam objectives. Use these domains as a study guide to focus your preparation. Remember, theory is important, but hands-on practice is essential for your success. In the upcoming weeks, I will be posting the full Network Plus course with a total of 13 lessons, each with between two and three modules each. And with that, I want to wish you good luck on your Network Plus certification journey.